Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanolay the Zidane. I remain your host, Shadow Fury 333. And this next match is going to be between Mirwan and El Torero. I'm oh, sorry, Mirwan and El Torero versus Capricious and Lancelin on Cold Snap. Now, this map I haven't actually seen since I think the last 2 2 tournament, like six months ago. It's a weird one because it is basically two battlegrounds. You have the lower lake area, which can get really mired if you get a lot of shots going on because it's not very hard. And you have the upper area. There's also, I guess, a middle lane. But I've, it seems like the middle lane and top lane, unless you're playing 3v3, are going to be pretty much the same part. People kind of go through this whole area and run around it. Looks like El Torero is trying to take the bottom alongside Capricious, while Lancelin in the center... And El Torero, oh, sorry, and Mur one right at the north. So El Torero seems to be the center of attention at the moment, getting. Actually, no, Mur one getting a bit scouted. Going for size. So Mur one going for immediate size, getting some setup for that. Lance only going for defense, trying to. Looks like they're just trying to hold the center pass. North side, Mur one already has scouting going, making sure that the northwest cannot be taken without their knowledge. Though, it doesn't appear that it's going to be taken anytime soon, and... What the? Ah, Spiderbot for Capricious. Didn't even notice that. Spiderbot for Capricious, nice setup. Getting rid of the early scouting, but no real early scouting themselves. The fleas should... I mean, they have their fleas out. What do they see? They see enough. Okay, never mind. They have... Wait, that's the wrong one. They don't actually see anything. Never mind. Completely disregard my last thing. They need to move these fleas a little bit further in, and if they want to see anything. I don't know if they're trying to wait for air units coming all over the hills, or if they're trying to wait for... I don't know... An invitation to walk over the mountains? Like, there's really no reason to wait. I mean, I guess the defenders would kill them. It's a little late now. That's for sure. Anyway, size haven't been revealed, so what is going to be done about that? Any darts? Any extra fleas for scouting purposes? I mean, more fleas are being built. But I don't see the fleas being used for screening purposes. They are being set up around the map. Like I said, not really in a way that actually allows them to see a whole lot. They, they do see a bit. These ones do. The ones further south near, uh, near El Terrero's base do not. So that's not doing a whole lot of good. And... Nice scouting. Okay. El Terrero's... Ma sorry, Muir's making sure they know what's going on. El Terrero has... Okay, come on. El Torero just setting up a nice offensive force of Scorchers. I mean, it looks like really it's just a matter of Eastern team now just trying to make sure they keep the North. Just get that North. At this point, everything's relatively even. West team going on the defensive. Phantom and Hermit for defensive. I'm a bit surprised the Fleas haven't been more aggressive or haven't been used a bit more for scouting purposes, trying to take out undefended areas. Like, over here, this is almost free. But no, Fleas aren't going to it. No clue why not, but they aren't going to it. A few darts are going to the north, but like I said, already there is a glaive there to stop any expansion in the northwest. Though, some pushing in. These slashers are getting a bit of momentum in for the western team. Or at least getting them some territory. Overall, though, the western team isn't really being that aggressive. Slowly but surely pushing in. While well, the Eastern team, on the other hand, is really trying to be aggressive. I mean, they're just making sure that everything is under their control. They know about everything. And now Flea's finally being used aggressively. No defense is really in place to deal with this, though. So we'll see if that... Where is that? There we go. Capricious' commander almost got killed by that scythe attack. Didn't manage to, though. And a couple sides being lost is a bit of a problem, although it looks like sides are no longer on the table. He seem apparently no longer deciding the size they're worth doing, so they aren't going to go for them. And West team crawling to the center. They already have the center in the center lane. The north side still moderately in Mueller's control, but it's going to be harder and harder to hold over time. And Western team, I mean, they've been building up. I They haven't been directly aggressive in the sense of being raiding a lot, but they are building up. And they're building up and pushing out slowly. They don't want to raid too much. But they definitely want to make sure that if they get raided, they can hold their territory. And once they're ready, they're going to push in. 
but they want to just have one big push and smash down the walls. Unfortunately for them, they are also a bit behind in resources. Fortunately for them, the Eastern team is accessing a little bit. And now Capricious Commander down for... Is it down for real? It is down for real! Capricious loses their commander. Little bit... I mean, it's plus 40, so it's not the biggest deal, but still not a good thing to lose when you're behind in the economy game. And on top of that, that commander was building up a fair amount, but there should be a weaver. Yeah, the weaver already along the way. That'll get the reclaim going. That should be able to compensate pretty well for the lack of the commander. Never a good idea to lose the commander, but at least that wasn't too upgraded of a commander. There wasn't a whole lot that it was building up to, so not a whole lot of metal lost. Of course, at this point, Landsland taking that north side. I mean, they let it go for long enough. And we see that, I mean, at this point, Mjolnir hasn't actually fortified the northern side at all. And I, I think that Lancelot, I think that the western team might have been thinking that the eastern team would overexpand. The western team would just let the eastern team expand more than they could safely do. And then smash the eastern team once that expansion had happened. And there was no defenses or anything. Like, get an undefended expansion, get a bunch of naked expansion going on, get the eastern team overconfident, and then break them when they've gone too far. That appears to be the strategy, and so far it's working. There is a Stardust up, not much else. Not a whole lot of other defenses going on over to the north, so really the north side's very vulnerable. Mira right now getting hit hard, Lancelot just gonna bear, just bearing down. But they're stopping, what? Okay. Here I thought there was that Lancelot was gonna go for the kill, but it looks like... Southern side, there is a bit of trouble. El Torero's commander up to level 4. Hmm. Machine gun, cluster bomb, shield, radar. Of course, given that spiders are the unit of choice over to the south side, I mean, that's what that's what Capricious has over to the south. That's fine. With all this water, no big deal. I mean, unless the water gets deep enough. But right now, it's not like vehicles. So the spiders aren't going to get too bogged down in this setup. I mean, the lake... Lake being smashed down, not going to be a problem. Cluster Bomb's doing a number, though. At the same time, nice Scorch Attack in the main base. Counter Attack from El Torero at the same time. So, pretty much a base rate situation going on here. Looks like we will have Lancelot take out El Torero's factory. El Torero, they'll probably be able to take out Capricious' factory. El Torero has just lost their factory. Capricious is about to... No, they're going to keep it. Venom and Redback should be able to save this. Getting rid of a few caretakers is still a bit of a problem. Western team about to access, but at the same time, Eastern team has lost one of their production facilities, and they don't have caretakers at the other one. So at this point, it looks like it is going to be still the advantage to the... Actually, the advantage to the Western team, potentially. This game's starting to turn around, but... Muir isn't going to let that happen, just lying down. Zeus coming to get rid of the Slashers and doing a fine job pushing them back. The north should be retaken pretty soon by Muir. And the southwest finally getting under control. Capricious is finally able to get that southwest area stopped, get the attack stopped, rebuild. That's going to be necessary because honestly, that was a big blow. They lost the caretakers. Didn't lose the factory though, thankfully, but they still lost the caretakers. They still got a fair amount of damage dealt. They got rid of El Torero's commander. At least that's a good thing. In the middle of all the other base trade stuff going on, El Torero lost their commander, and that was a lot of money invested in that one commander. So this is going to be good. It's going to be really good for the Western team. Now the Eastern team has to rebuild El Torero with another light vehicle factory a bit closer on the ice this time. While Mew just going and continue to go for the Zeus, Zeus warrior setup. And it's doing just fine. The Slashers can't easily deal with that. On the other hand, a nice little stinger on the hill, that would do a trick. Don't think it's going to be a big problem, though. This will, however. Oh no, never mind, what am I saying? Zeus is deal damage. Venom's not so much. Venom's do deal damage, but not very much. Zeus, however, the paralysis is kind of a side effect. Still, the Western team, they kind of got behind. They need to rebuild the Southwest. Like, Capricious really needs to rebuild the Southwest ASAP. This is a huge problem. Yeah, they got a lot of reclaim. Could take that too, and should. They have enough... Well, yeah, they have enough production. They can easily take that. They need more energy to really make the most of it. 
but the Southwest, losing that Southwest was a problem, and losing the energy the Southwest provided was an even bigger problem. Is an even bigger problem. And this one, Wolverine's taking out that lake. Now, of course, like I said, the Spider Fountain Factory is much better suited to this terrain deformation than the Light Vehicle Factory. But I don't think it's going to matter. Like, the big problem here is these flea mines, sorry, the claw mines getting distracted in my own head because the fleas would be the counter to this. Just spam fleas, send them out, screen for claw mines, and then take out the wolverines directly. Or at least screen out the mines. I mean, that's the best thing to do in the first place. Because these mines are building up. Some knowledge of where they are is helpful. It's coming in. Where's the Voltrader going, though? Well, it's got to go somewhere, because it just got scouted out. But still, north side... North side, we do see Mirror going for a counterattack. They want to get revenge for what happened earlier. And south side's a bit of a stalemate at the moment. A couple of Venoms trying to break in, but Mirror having a lot more success over to the north. Scythe looks like it's doing not much more than distracting the defense towers, but that's good. That's a pretty good thing to have happen. Problem, however, is that one of those is a Faraday. So even distracting is not going to be doing a huge amount of good, and looks like the attack has fallen. Wolverines in the south, however, are doing a fair bit of damage. They are keeping Capricus busy at any rate, and Lancelin able to hold the line over to the northwest. Lost a bit in the process, but the problem, however, is the center west. That is open. That has been breached, pretty much. These Zeus's don't have to worry about the defenders. That's not a problem. Stinger's a bit of a problem, but it's on the ground. The Zeus could actually deal with that relatively straightforwardly. No Stardust, no Commander, nothing else really in the way. And over to the south, the Wolverine's taking this out as well, and we do see the economy advantage definitely in favor of the Eastern team. The Western team finally rebuilding the Southwest, but it's not quite enough at the moment. Really, the Eastern team, if we look what they have, it... That's... You suddenly seem a bit skewed. The Eastern team right now, they've got... They have quite a lot of metal right now. I mean, this is the Eastern team right here. The Western team doesn't have anything in the center, doesn't have anything in the ice. The Eastern team has quite a lot in the North center, a bit in the East center, and even the South center has got a fair amount of that too. And of course, everything inside their base has all been taken. And the meat grinder has stopped over to the North side. Looks like Muir's broken through it. Lancelin forced to retreat, and... Oh, they lost their commander in the process. I totally missed that. Yep, totally lost their commander in the process. I don't think there's any commanders left in the game. Yeah, it looks like they're all down. Oh, no, never mind. Muir still has their commander. Muir ahead in the commander game. Of course, the real thing being the economy game. And at this point, that's coming up from Lancelan. Wolverine's trying to stop the assault. Not going to do much good, though. They really had to have set up beforehand. This point is just going to die. The South Battle turned a bit of a stalemate. I mean, clearly it's being ground down. Like, Cabbage's forces are being ground down, but it's not quite quickly enough. Brawler going to come in to try to help save the day, get rid of the Wolverines, stop the Climb Mines from doing any more damage. But at the same time, Ravager's going to be assaulting along the South. This is totally undefended. I mean, there's probably radar. No doubt there's radar, just because... Oh, no, there isn't. It actually avoids even the worker radar. Raptors managing to get in, though, that being said, there isn't much to stop them. The south side is basically open. Very good move by El Torero right now. It's exactly what they want to do. Also getting some air factory just in case, just to get, keep up in, if they need to for the brawlers and black dons. Unfortunately, Raptors kind of drove into their own grave. I was expecting they would have gone down around the south here, taken out the economy area, maybe taken out the spider factory. Tried to break the spot that was less defended, rather than going for the gunship factory directly. I mean, good call on the Hawks, getting rid of all that stuff there, but the Ravagers really didn't make much sense. When you consider just how pitted this part of the landscape is, part of the battlefield, the, the lake really does not serve the vehicles well. So I'm not sure I understood that exact angle of approach. Regardless, Muir just sweeping down from the north. And Lancelin has basically been eliminated. Capris is about to be eliminated, just about. They really have got not much to deal with this. It feels like it's practically one on two at the moment. 
I mean, Lancelot has no production, they have no units, they have some economies, that's how- oh, sorry, not no units, they have the Wolverines, but that's about it. Nothing to rebuild. And El Torero, second pass in the Ravagers, does work. There's enough pressure there, and not enough spider spots to get in the way. And that pretty much broke their... That's broken their resolve. Western team lost the resolve. Capricious, however, does not seem to know that there's a resign command. Capricious must be an old-school spring player who hasn't played much 0k, because... They're, they know that there are exclamation mark commands, they just don't know that you go to F10, resign. Or shift escape, oops. Shift escape, which is the same thing. Resign. But yeah, that was... That kind of turned around here. I thought the Western team was starting to push back momentum, and they actually did get a decent amount of damage dealt, but they didn't manage to ultimately push that much territory. Got rid of a factory, though, which was good. Like El Torero lost a factory, lost some momentum. But rebuilding the factory on the ice ended up working out just fine. Wolverines tore that apart while the north side... I mean, Lancelin probably would have had some success if they'd pushed in with everything. They took out that Stardust, there was nothing else behind it. They could have just walked straight into Muir's base. Nothing would have stopped them, or very little. There, was some, there were offensive units, but not a whole lot would have stopped them. But yeah, Muir basically took that game. Huge part there. Oh, I'm sorry, that was... Banshee's this up. Ugh. Sorry about that. Banshee's really didn't make a difference. Though. Honestly, if there were Banshee rates at the top, it didn't matter. By that point, the top hadn't taken. Mira already had it. There were levelers and slashers in this group, too. I mean, it's, I'm saying about the Stardust here. Yeah, the Scorchers would have been dead, but that's where the levelers and slashers come in. Take out the Stardust, break it down, and then the Scorchers can come in and do some, do some damage without dying. But yeah, it... Like I said, Banshee Assault didn't really make a difference. I'm sorry I missed that. That's the one thing about... That's probably why I'm doing this, is so that I get into the mindset of how to cast 2v2. Because casting 2v2 is hard, <laughs> compared to 1v1. And, of course, tournament's on Saturday, so... Gotta make sure that I've got a bit of practice on that. How to do a 2v2 cast when I have very little sleep. That's something I'm going to have to practice for tomorrow. For, sorry, not tomorrow, for Saturday. It's not easy. Anyway, last game tonight is going to be on... Oh, what is last game going to be on? It is going to be Isle of Grief between Capricious Captain Nutbar and Radavadra with North Chilean G. That'll be up in a couple minutes, so stay tuned for that. And hopefully I don't miss any Banshee Raids in this map. Bit easier because Isle of Grief is a bit more 1v1 focused. I'm curious to see how this works in 2v2. Like, Bold Snaps has got lanes. I mean, it's designed for 4v4, 5v5, at least 3v3. Lots of places to go in this map. Works pretty well as a team map, actually. Provided I make sure to look at the minimap and actually cast what's happening. Anyway, getting back to that, that'll be up in a couple minutes, so stay tuned. <laughs> 